Imagine a locomotive so perfectly matched to its surroundings that it did not rely on brute force or spectacle. It relied on consistency. Built for flat land, tight schedules, and relentless expectations, it turned punctuality into a standard, not a luxury. This was the New York Central Mohawk, and once it began running, it quietly taught an entire region how to expect speed, reliability, and time itself. The Mohawk did not come out of a crisis or a desperate experiment. It came from something much quieter and much more dangerous. Confidence. By the early 20th century, the New York Central Railroad already controlled one of the most valuable transportation corridors in the world. From New York City through Albany, across Ohio, and all the way to Chicago, its tracks followed rivers, plains, and long, gentle stretches of land. There were no brutal climbs, no desperate battles with gravity. The landscape cooperated. But why did this geography matter so much more than people realized at the time? Because geography dictates philosophy. Railroads that fought mountains needed brute force. Railroads that followed rivers could prioritize speed, balance, and rhythm. The New York Central did not need locomotives that could survive punishment. It needed locomotives that could repeat perfection. That single distinction quietly reshaped every engineering decision that followed. And if the goal was speed and rhythm, what kind of locomotive do you actually build for that? You do not chase extremes. You chase consistency. The New York Central focused on locomotives that could maintain high speeds for long distances without shaking apart, overheating, or wearing themselves down. Instead of brute strength, they refined balance. Instead of spectacle, they refined reliability. That design mindset would soon produce the Mohawk. But if the Mohawk was built on refinement rather than revolution, why does it still stand out today? Because it was refinement taken seriously. On paper, the Mohawk was a 482 steam locomotive, a layout used across the country. But the New York Central tuned every element to its specific network. Wheel balance, boiler output, valve timing, and riding stability were all optimized for sustained speed on flat terrain. It was not generic, it was deliberate. So why give it a name at all when so many locomotives were just numbers? Because the Mohawk was meant to represent identity. The name came from the Mohawk River, a constant companion to the railroad mainline. That river symbolized smooth flow and dependable movement. The Mohawk locomotive was meant to do the same thing quietly, efficiently, and without drama. But naming a locomotive is one thing. Did it actually change how the railroad operated? Well, yes, it did. Once Mohawks entered service, dispatchers began trusting schedules more aggressively. Crews expected engines to behave predictably. The railroad started designing operations around precision instead of buffers. The Mohawk did not just move trains, it raised expectations. And what happens when expectations rise across an entire system? The system tightens, schedules compress, connections become more precise, delays stop being tolerated, the New York Central became less forgiving of inefficiency because the Mohawk made efficiency normal. Reliability stopped being impressive. It became assumed. But this was not the New York Central's first attempt at building reliable power. So why was the Mohawk different? Earlier locomotives like Pacific's and Hudson's were excellent but increasingly stretched. Traffic was growing faster than they could comfortably handle. Trains were longer. Loads were heavier. The Mohawk filled the gap between raw power and sustained performance. It was not a leap forward, it was a stabilizer. And that stability sounded good in good times. But what about when everything went wrong? The Great Depression tested every assumption. Railroads collapsed, equipment was scrapped, expansion plans died overnight. Yet the New York Central kept refining the Mohawk because efficiency was no longer optional. When survival depends on margins, dependable machines become lifelines. So what exactly made the Mohawk cheaper and safer to rely on during economic collapse? Balanced design reduces wear. Efficient boilers reduced fuel waste. Smooth riding reduces maintenance. Over thousands of miles, those small advantages compounded. The Mohawk cost less to run per mile than older designs, which made it invaluable when every dollar mattered. And as the Mohawk improved, 
Did its influence stay confined to rail operations? Not at all. Towns along the main line began experiencing predictability. Factories timed shifts to arrivals they trusted. Markets scheduled deliveries without padding delays. Passenger travel reshaped daily routines. Time stopped being flexible, it became fixed. But the Mohawk was not the only famous locomotive on the New York Central. So where did it fit in the bigger picture? It worked alongside the Hudson. Hudson's handled high-speed passenger service and public attention. Mohawks handled fast freight and mixed service. One sold the image, the other kept the system functioning. Together, they normalized speed and reliability. And what did that give the New York Central that competitors struggled to copy? Confidence was the New York Central's real product. More than steel, more than steam, more than speed. The railroad did not just move trains, it sold certainty. When it talked about the water level route, it was not pitching a clever slogan or a marketing trick. It was making a promise about how its entire system would behave day after day. A promise that trains would not battle mountains, would not stall on brutal grades, and would not gamble with unpredictable terrain. That promise was backed by machines like the Mohawk, locomotives designed to glide rather than struggle. While competitors poured resources into overcoming geography, fighting steep climbs and inevitable delays, the New York Central leaned into smoothness. It built a reputation on flow, on rhythm, on the idea that transportation could be boring in the best possible way. And once customers experienced that kind of reliability, it became incredibly hard to accept anything less. But if the Mohawk was so effective, why did its story end so quietly? Because the real threat never came from failure. It came from progress. Diesel electric locomotives did not need hours to raise steam or teams of specialists to keep boilers alive. They could be started quickly, shut down just as easily, and returned to service with far less preparation. Maintenance schedules were simpler. Downtime was shorter. The crews were smaller. And over thousands of miles and countless operating hours, those advantages stacked up relentlessly. Even the most refined steam locomotives, machines like the Mohawk that represented the absolute peak of steam era efficiency, could not compete with that economic reality. Steam had been perfected just as the rules of the game changed, and progress does not wait for mastery to catch up. So did the Mohawk fail in the end? No. It succeeded too well. The Mohawk did exactly what it was designed to do, and it did it better than almost anything that came before it. It perfected a system built around steam power, precision scheduling, and mechanical rhythm at the exact moment that the world began shifting away from that system entirely. The Mohawk did not fade because it was unreliable or outdated in its own context. It faded because the context itself changed. New technology rewrote the rules, and steam, no matter how refined, could not adapt fast enough. The Mohawk did not lose relevance through failure. It lost relevance because progress moved forward, quietly and relentlessly, leaving even its best creations behind. And when the locomotives disappeared, did their influence disappear with them? The opposite happened. Diesel operations inherited tight schedules. Logistics inherited precision. The expectation that transportation should be smooth, fast, and boringly reliable became permanent. The Mohawk shaped the future without being part of it. So what does the Mohawk actually leave behind today? A mindset. Dependability over drama. Rhythm over spectacle. Quiet machines that change the world by doing their job perfectly. The New York Central Mohawk was never meant to be legendary. It was meant to work. And in doing so, it taught America how to expect speed. Today, only a handful remain in museums. Cold steel silent boilers. But if you look closely, you can still see their legacy in every schedule that runs on time. Subscribe for more stories about the machines that shaped the modern world. Because some revolutions do not shout, they arrive exactly when expected.